You know, every day in the news you hear about everything bad, right? I want to give you some good news. And you people, right here, you people, you're my peeps, right? Oh, well, anyway. Hey, right here in this room, you are the very first to hear about this. I am so excited. You know, we've been praying about the cross. This morning, after the first service, a grandmother brought up her granddaughter. She's nine years old. Her name, the granddaughter's name is Bailey. And Bailey said to me, I have asked Jesus to come into my heart. Her name is on the cross. How about that? I tell you, if you can't get excited about a nine-year-old girl coming to Jesus, I don't know what's wrong, okay? That is so cool. And her name is going to come off the cross, and next week I get to tell the first hour people, but, you know, I am actually going to come on Facebook this week. New Hope Facebook. Anybody here follow me on New Hope Facebook? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's be honest. I'm rarely there, okay? But it's going to be posted. I am so thrilled. Whoa! I love how God works. And we're praying for those people. Join me. Father, we lift up nine-year-old Bailey to you today. Thank you that all of heaven is celebrating because Bailey asked Jesus to be her Savior. She accepted your free gift of eternal life. We praise you for that. Father, may that just energize us afresh and anew that as we look at your holy word, it's real, it's powerful, it changes lives. You, Father, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, your Son changes lives. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we are currently on a series entitled uh, Typical or Devoted? Okay, so answer this question again. It's all month. You've got one more week. Am I typical or am I devoted? Everybody can be typical. Everybody can choose to be devoted. You know, it's interesting that in our world, we can be devoted to something. We usually are. But in this context, I want to talk about us as followers of Jesus, okay? I'm taking the position, as I look at you, that generally speaking, I would say most, if not everyone, most of us in this room would identify ourselves as being a Christian, being a follower of Jesus at some level, okay? But here's the difference, okay? Jesus said to us, I'm giving you your mission for life. That's what he told his disciples that day after going through all of that, you know, being crucified, being buried, spilling his blood, rising again from the dead. He met with his disciples one last time. And he said to them, as he says to you and me, as you are going, make disciples. Whoa. What a mission, what a purpose, what a value to latch on to. And so here's the the question. Typical Christians go to church, okay? Typical ordinary people who say, I'm a Christian in America, okay? I'm a Christian, I go to church, okay? That's what typical Christians are supposed to do. And every Sunday... Every Sunday, all over our country, typical Christians go to church. But devoted Christians, devoted disciples, devoted followers of Jesus understand something that the typical person doesn't ever seem to get. And that is, we are the church, not this. This happens to be the building that we meet in. Okay, we happen to have purchased this plot of ground years ago, I mean a long time ago, and then we, God provided and we were able to add these buildings. And so we meet in here. Earlier we sang that song, Holy Spirit, you are welcomed here. I just want to remind you, my friend, a devoted disciple understands the Holy Spirit doesn't live here. 
I don't come into this building every day and meet the Holy Spirit. I don't meet God here. God comes with me here. And God wants to fill our place. But he can only do that when you and I, as followers of Jesus, allow him to lead and govern and control our life. So when I walk into this building, I'm either walking in with the Holy Spirit having freedom to work in my life and through my life, or I can walk into this building and just show up. I can be here, I can engage, I can do all the stuff, but the Holy Spirit isn't permitted in my life, okay, the typical Christian's life, to really govern, lead, and dictate, and control. You see the difference? Followers who are devoted to Jesus understand that no matter where I go, no matter what day or time it is throughout the week, I am a follower of Jesus. I am sending a message. I'm giving a message every place I go, every moment of the day. That's why I have found in my own personal life that every morning I wake up and I say to, the, to God, I say to the Lord Jesus, I say to the Holy Spirit, please use me. Help me to honor you today. Okay? That's what we're talking about this month because I really want to encourage you as an individual. It's not about your circumstances. And oftentimes we get, we get consumed with our circumstances. And then we decide, I can only follow God if my circumstances are better. And today and next week, we're going to look at the lives of a group of people in a modern city of that time, okay? It's called Thessalonica. It was in a region called Macedonia, and it was one of the cities of the Apostle Paul's time, and he writes them two letters, and we're going to look at just one little part in the first letter, okay? But I just want to remind us that following Jesus is a personal choice. Not based on how I'm feeling at the moment, not based on my current momentary circumstances, not anything but a choice. Will I submit myself to Jesus? And that's what this series is all about. And we're looking at three values that we here as the church known as New Hope have taken on and made it our values. And we've been looking at three of them. The first one last week was speaking hope. We talked about evangelism. All evangelism is, is you and me speaking to others about the change of life Jesus has given to us. Sharing, speaking hope into lives who right now have no hope, even though many of them feel like they are full of life, which they are. Many, many people every day that you come into contact with, man, they're going for it. They're, they're doing it. Life is great, and they're, they're marching forward. The problem is they have no clue that their march is going to lead them into an eternity which lasts a whole lot longer than 80 or 90 or 100 years here on earth. They're marching into an eternity without God. And that's hell enough. And you and I have with us the message of hope. Today we want to look at living hope. Living hope. I want to talk to you about community. That's what community is all about. Living the hope of Jesus Christ knitted together with other people who happen to be in the same place with me, okay? We're not going to talk about uh, living hope for people all over the world. Anyone who has Jesus as their Savior have living hope. We can't engage with them. We don't have connections like we do right here in this place that we call New Hope. All right. So today we're going to think about community. Here's I, I just wanted to kick off with community. What is it? 
Well, the baseline is found in the dictionary. And of course, I always go to the uh, authorities on uh, Google and they bring up dictionary and it says a group of people having a particular characteristic in common. Now you go ahead and check that out if you want to after the service. Okay. Anyway, on your smart device, those of you who aren't tracking. Okay. Many of you are tracking. I know you are. Okay. That's cool. A group of people having a particular characteristic in common. So what does that mean for New Hope? New Hope is a community. We are banding together for mutual support and outward ministry. That is what a community of believers does. We see it all through the New Testament. Jesus spoke about it. The Apostle Paul led a whole band of, of guys together and they roamed the world of their day to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. The disciples who became the apostles, the leaders of, the, of Christ's church after he went back to heaven, you read in Acts chapters 1 and 2 how they spoke the truth and the Spirit of God changed the world through them. I tell you, it is powerful. And then as these people listened to the Lord Jesus Christ, as they followed him and made a commitment to him, it changed everything in their lives. I, I just love that. I love rereading it. I love being reminded of it. Another thing I enjoy doing is rereading the letters in the New Testament that the Apostle Paul and others wrote. The Apostle Paul, most of his letters were written to groups of people. Now, he had a few that were written to individuals, such as Timothy and Philemon and Titus. And he wrote those so that they could then turn around and really make a difference in the lives of the people that they encountered, okay? But to this morning, for our benefit, we're going to look at the life of a church, okay? This is a church that was founded by the Apostle Paul. You can read about it in the book of Acts. It talks all about it, how Paul and his entourage showed up in Thessalonica. There were no believers there. It was a metropolitan uh, city. It was on one of the number one main highways from Rome to the other parts of the world. They had quite a community. It was an open community, which meant they were not under the legalism of Rome, but Rome allowed them to express themselves and be themselves. And boy, this city went, went to the degree of doing that. And it was in this mix that the Apostle Paul shows up one day and he began to teach them. You can read all about it in the book of Acts. Do it on your own time. You can do it. It doesn't take long. He shows up and he literally just created a major stir in the community of Thessalonica. And some people believed the word of Christ that the Apostle Paul spoke. And they banded together. And then Paul had to leave them suddenly. It's an interesting, fascinating story. How all of a sudden one day, Paul and his men had to leave because uh, the leaders of Thessalonica just had had it. And they were going to do him in. They were literally going to erase him. So he and his guys took off. But later, he sends back one of his men, young Timothy. He writes two letters to Timothy, by the way, in the New Testament. He sends him back to kind of get an idea. What ha what's happening in Thessalonica? What's happening? And he couldn't call him on the cell phone, so he sent Timothy. And Timothy comes back and reports to the Apostle Paul how life is going. And so Paul sits down and writes this letter. We give thanks to God always for all of you in chapter 1. Okay, in chapter 1. Constantly mentioning you in our prayers. Remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Boom! Three things that identified, that characterized this group of people who chose to get together and follow Jesus. 
kind of like what we do in our world today. We get together, we come to church, we hang together, we say we like to be a part of the body of Christ, which is what we need to be doing. We get that. But in that day, I'm telling you, they didn't have all the enjoyments that you and I have as a fellow believer today. They didn't have the Word of God at their disposal. They had to go to church to hear the Word of God. They had to sit and listen to someone speak forth out of the writings that God gave to them from the Old Testament. And they had to be in church to even hear it. You and I can read it any time, any place. We can even listen to it. As we're going down the road, sitting in our room, doing whatever, we can even have it verbalized for us. Something else that you and I enjoy, we have the privilege of just going to church. If I want to go to church, I go to church. No big deal. Good night. I can pick from a multitude of churches. In Hermiston alone, you probably have about 30 different churches. In Thessalonica, there was only one place. And if you showed up there, boy, were you identified. In fact, we learn from Scripture that when people followed Jesus, it cost them. It cost them big time. So here's this group of believers. They're they're banding together. Paul sends Timothy back to discover what's going on. And he identifies three things. Work of faith, labor of love, and steadfastness of hope. We'll talk about that next week. Okay? For we know, he writes, brothers and sisters, loved by God, he has chosen you. I love that expression. God has chosen you. God has chosen me. See, here's the inside story on that. That is so cool. I come up to the door of salvation. I walk up to it, and the Bible tells me, Jesus says, come to me. Accept my free gift of eternal life. Believe in me. Trust me. Give me your life. And I say, okay, Lord, you are the only way to have eternal life. I accept it. The door opens. I walk through. I'm in the family. I'm in the inside. I now have something I never had before. The door closes. I turn around and I look at it. And it says, I chose you before the foundation of the world. I chose you. Oh, man, is that awesome. So guess what? Here you and I are. We're on the inside, okay? Like the Thessalonian believers, we're on the inside. We understand that. So when he makes that statement, they're all going, Ooh, cool, cool. It's cool. We're all followers of Jesus. So, so then he continues on, because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit. They didn't just speak a bunch of empty words. And see, that's what's so cool about being a follower of Jesus. That's what's so cool about banding together as believers like this. We don't just speak words. We speak power through the Holy Spirit. And with full conviction, you know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake. Just talking about the influence, okay? Then he goes on to write, And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. My friend. Here we are, New Hope Community. We're banding together for the sake of Jesus Christ. We have been called by Jesus. We've accepted the free gift. We're enjoying the association we have with one another. But I want you to note something there. That's what devotion is all about. Devotion to Jesus is you and I become imitators of him. See, that's what devoted disciples understand. Typical Christians acknowledge it. Many of them claim to have it. But there's no evidence. They're just marking time. Marking time. Doing what is expected. Devoted disciples understand, I'm here because of Jesus. I'm not here because it's convenient. I'm not here because it makes me feel good. I'm here because of Jesus. And the presence of the Holy Spirit knits me together with other people. And that's what's so cool about community. Now, you have to understand this. 
New Hope is so different from the church in Thessalonica that day. Thessalonian believers, there was a small group of them first, and they began to grow and grow. But their, their grouping together didn't happen weekly. It happened every day because they had to hang on to each other. They had to support each other. They had to remind each other daily it's worth doing. It's worth following. You know why? Because their lives were in peril the moment they accepted Jesus. Today, it's easy come, easy go. We can come, we can go, whatever. We meet in a big group like this, it feels good. But see, real community happens when we begin to knit ourselves with a smaller group of people. That's why New Hope believes in small groups. It's kind of like taking Thessalonica and dropping it right into our lap putting ourselves into smaller venues so we can look each other in the eye. This is one of the things I love about my small group. I call them my crew, okay? They're my crew, all right? I love them. And you know why? Because every week at an appointed time, we get together, we share and talk and laugh and have a good time, get to know each other, and then we look at the Word of God, we get into the Word of God. I'm so excited about what we're doing starting tonight. I can hardly wait. We're looking at a fabulous woman of her day who God put in just the right place. Anyway, if I keep going, I'll start talking about that and we're all off the subject. Anyway, we're looking at the life of Esther starting tonight. But then we... Then we share and we pray for each other. That is so cool. That is awesome when I know I've got this little band of people who are praying for me. That's community. Okay? I love it. So that, and Paul continues on, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. You know what he's talking about there? Your statement of faith, your life of devotion to Christ became known. You know what, as the pastor of New Hope, you know what my biggest dream is for New Hope? Well, let me tell you. My biggest dream for us is that our statement of faith, our admiration of God, our devotion to Jesus would become known, known, known. In Umatilla and Morrow counties, that people everywhere would hear about the believers of New Hope for no other reason than they are faithful and standing and following someone. We don't get it, but boy, are they something different. That's what I dream for our church. I, my biggest dream for you is that others would know that you are a part of something not bigger, but something significant that we'll never let go of. That's what the Apostle Paul's talking about them. So you see, community happens when we invest in the welfare of our church. No, no, see, some people will misunderstand that. What it means is community in this place happens when you and I invest ourselves. See, the typical Christian comes to church and asks one question. I bet you didn't know this. Yeah, one question. What about me? That's the typical Christian. They come to church, and the first thing they want to know is, what are you going to do for me? How are you going to make me feel? Do I like you? Do you like me? It's all about me. And there are people everywhere who go to church here and go to church there and try this church and go to that church and boom, 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 all over the place because what they're looking for is a place that will meet their needs. A devoted disciple doesn't just go to church. A devoted disciple asks this question. What can I do? What can I do for you? I love that. I love attitude of people who come to New Hope and they say, 
hey, what can I do? I want to make a difference. I want to, I want to band with you. I want to connect. I want to be a follower of Jesus, making a difference in the lives of people inside the church and outside the church. I want, uh, tell me, just tell me, what do you want me to do? I love that. Oh, man, that is so cool. See, that's when community really happens, when we have that attitude. Secondly, community happens when we band together inside to do ministry and outside to do ministry. When we take ministry so seriously, we're willing to band together and say, put me there, put me there. What can I do? Best way to do it. In a group setting like this, it is so easy for us to just come and be a part and enjoy it. It's a whole other ball game. It takes us to a different level when we connect with the ministry, when we connect with a group, when we submit ourselves to the welfare of the whole, it changes lives. Little Bailey, nine years old, life changed. Why? Somebody cared. Somebody prayed for her. Somebody told her about Jesus. Listen, in a moment, Pastor Henry is going to come and close us out. But before he does, my friend, that's what it means to spend 2018 being devoted to Jesus. Saying, Lord, you have given me everything. Give me the courage and the vision and the desire to invest everything for you.